I love listening to you talk about the evolution of fish. You know, it, you know, they've been around for a while. They know what they're doing. They're pretty much experts looking after themselves. But I mean, if we wanted to check the fish's health in the winter, is there anything people can do? It's not like looking after a dog or cat, is it? It's more tricky. Yeah, this is another reason why keeping feeding the fish over winter is so important not only is it giving the, the fish the energy they need to get through the winter as we've already talked about but it's feeding time when we interact with the fish so they you're able to you know do a head count maybe you're able to then see if there's any wounds blemishes cuts scratches visible parasites like leeches mm. might be on the fish um and you know we see how active they are are they coming up and taking the food as they normally do um, and that's our time to interact and almost do that sort of really crude health check on the fish. A lot of infectious diseases, a lot of the parasites will be in much, you know, they're very inactive like the fish are. They're as temperature, their life cycles are as temperature dependent as the fish, fish's activity is. So lots of the parasites will be in a, a winter dormancy. Um, and bacterial infections, just again, because the water's cooler, the bacterial doubling time is, is slowed right down. There is one, disease though that we do tend to associate with pond fish in winter and that's a, a disease called carp pox and this looks just like someone's got some candle wax and dribbled a bit of candle wax onto the onto the fish commonly seen in goldfish and, and carp um, in in winter and this is nothing to be alarmed about it's it's just a disfiguring viral disease it's caused by a relative of the herpes viruses so for people that get cold sores would say you know a cold sore can strike when your immune system's a bit run down um, and that's because these these herpes viruses can lie sort of dormant in the skin tissue and when the immune system is is not working as effectively then the the, the virus can cause a cause an infection pretty much the same etiology with with carp pox the virus it's an aloe herpes virus lying dormant in, the, in the, the, the skin tissue of the fish. When the temperature declines, the immune system's not working so well, and that virus can then cause this sort of slimy, waxy growth um, as it causes the cells to sort of grow, skip those infected skin cells to grow and divide and become hyperplastic or, or, or greatly enlarged. Come spring and the rising of water temperatures, we very often see that carp pox disappears. And it's, it causes no real harm to the fish. Just in perfectly healthy fish swimming around with a bit of carp pox on them. And it's a bit disfiguring. Um, and if it's over the eye um, or, you know, if it, if it got over the gills, it could cause more problems. But we tend to just see it on the skin and it doesn't, doesn't really cause too much harm. But it can look quite alarming to the pond keep if you don't know if you haven't encountered it. Yeah. Of course, as a, as a cold sore can look quite alarming to a person if they've never encountered one. Yes, yes, but then nobody ever died of a cold sore. No. Uh, well, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> I've looked into there's, that. I think you're right. There's worse viruses at the moment to think about than cold There are. Let me think. What are they? Yeah. I'm not sure it's gone from my mind. Mm. 